ladies and gentlemen, it's Friday night. I'm not wearing underwear, and it's time for chaos. Oh, good. Indeed. I, uh... To be sure. I, uh, this is the second uh, start to this episode because I fucked up the first one. I said lurdies or l- You might want to do it a third time because uh, no. Ross talked over you. In I'm the keeping it. Time. I think this is the one. This is the one. <laughs> I'm about to take a big sip of water before I. <laughs> <laughs> what was lost in this is that I am not wearing underwear uh, because, and I'm sharing with this with all of you because, am I the only one that waits until there's absolutely no underwear or socks left? Before you do the laundry, I will wear like my last pair of dress socks to the gym before I do <laughs> laundry. I'll be like the fanciest tuxedo dress socks. <laughs> well, I'm at the gym. Same thing with underwear. And today I was like, ah, I, I, I went beyond Rangoon. It's very un of you. I know. I just, do. I, it's because no, I don't, don't want to fold it. I don't want to fold it. I don't mind doing it. It's the, it's knowing that I have to fold it. That Nobody I just like, wants to, but you have a duty to do your laundry and fold it. I I do mine every week because of doing kickboxing. I have hand wraps and I only have three of them. So once they're up, I need to do laundry and I just do every all my laundry. Week? Yeah, I do that it every very... week. Otherwise I run out of clothes and then I can't go to the gym. <laughs> that is very adult. Uh, uh, Ross, how often do you do laundry? Yeah, like once, once every week and a half. I don't, I don't let it go to E, man. As soon as that needle dips below the halfway point, I got it, I got it washing and tumbling. Because the bottom of that drawer has not been seen in eons. I don't, oh I don't want to know what's down there. I think I'm washing Thanksgiving clothes today. I mean, it's that. <laughs> that is how long I will wait. Uh, Rob, you got to be with me on this. Maybe this is. A I'm in East, between. East Coast I'm in between. Thing. I've got an East Coast. <laughs> it's a geographical. <laughs> Uh, no, I, uh, I, I build in a couple of like shitty old pairs of underwear so that when I get to those, they're like way too big and stretched out and they're like out of date boxers or something. There's just something where it's like <laughs> just the, the, it's like wearing a hair shirt. If you're like a Catholic in medieval you feel times, the shame it's like, I know, choice. yeah, I just like know it. I'm like, Oh, this is awful. I need like my, you know, my, uh, me undies or whatever. No, uh, <laughs> hashtag no sponsorship. Um, yeah. But, no, that uh, is that is a good point. All right, so I'm not the only one. I do have that. I have like those last five pairs yeah, that I don't like, want to wear. Uh, They're uncomfortable. Yeah, and I just kept pushing the envelope. Just uh, like that yeah, episode see, of that's... Seinfeld where Kramer tries to drive the car until it goes on empty. It's the same thing. I'm like, I can just do one more day. Just one more day. The day I was like, I pushed it too far. I will say, I usually, you know, I I do my laundry regularly, but there was like a stint where I was just so freaking busy and just. Did not want to ha- deal with it that I went out and bought even more underwear because like, I just like, do not, I don't want to do it right now. Been there. Yeah. 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 That, that happens a lot on the road. It's like, well, I guess we're buying underwear today. Uh, I, I sold like my last three. I feel like I'm still in the honeymoon phase of like not being in an apartment where I have like laundry in unit. I have laundry mm-hmm. in my house. So I'm just like, yeah. I can just do whatever I want. So it really makes I you do. feel like a Rockefeller. I, yeah. I, since the days of, of, uh, <laughs> of Chicago winter laundromats are behind me back then. Oh yeah. Go go hit rock bottom. (laughs) (laughs) I, uh, I I used to have an apartment on the upper West side and right across the street was this, uh, this, uh, little place you could drop off a bag of laundry. That was the thing you could do it yourself, but if you get, you do the drop off, it costs way more. It was totally not worth it except for all the time you would save. You drop it off, you pick it up. They did a great job folded and everything. Well, I, I had to, leave this apartment and I had all this laundry and I was like, I don't want to bring this to the next. I just brought like three bags of laundry over to this woman and I didn't pick it up for like a year and a half. I went back (gasps) there and like, thankfully the place was still there. I was like, I think I have some bags. And she's like, Oh, I don't know where these are. It was like in the warehouse. He's finally come. (laughs) You've been reported to the police. We thought you were dead. (laughs) (laughs) How many clothes do you have? This is what I'm learning is that I feel like I can't imagine you're like, what, what is the yeah? What is this pyramid of clothes you live on? <laughs> I went through a phase where I really couldn't throw stuff out. I'm still yep. pretty bad at it. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna fit into this small tank top again. Let me keep it. And now it's just like used as a rag. But I can't. I have trouble throwing out clothes because I'm bad at like Marie Condoing thing. Like things bring me joy from mm-hmm. the memory of this shirt. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. oh, I remember bartending in that shirt. I don't know. No. I gotta. I gotta do some cleaning. 
Well, no, plus you have like, don't you have like 12 people that live in your house? I can't imagine, like the idea of doing laundry feels very daunting and I don't even, uh, haven't even witnessed it. Well, also, because I'm a psychopath, my wife is like, I- I'll do your laundry. Just stop, let me do it. And I'm like, no, you don't know how to do it like I like it. Because I have to, I don't like drying my t-shirts. I have to hang up all of my t-shirts because all I wear are hoodies and oh. brewery t-shirts. And I don't want them to shrink. <laughs> so I wash them and I want to make sure it's in cold water. She just mixes the, the white. So that's the, your the, problem. Yeah. That's what I do. If it can't be washed in the regular cycle, I don't own that type of item. Like Same. if it doesn't live, it's gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but but Troy is a sort sartorialist. He can't have his wife shrinking his like pissing beaver IPA t-shirt. His fourth black hoodie. This yeah. is my favorite black hoodie. Yeah. There we, we were on tour once and uh someone told me that Kate said, I think Troy wears the same clothes every day. And then I brought it up in conversation in public with her. It was the uh, jeans. It was the jeans. Well, yes, I only own one oh, yeah. pair of pants. This is my pants. Because you kept but wearing jeans to the airport. And I'm like, why do you choose not comfort? And you're like, these are my only pants. I went through this phase like pre-COVID where I was wearing like joggers everywhere, like on stage. I just come out and be like, this is comfortable. Why, what are we doing here? I was like a New Jersey gangster for a while. It's just, I got it. I was like, this is comfort. Um, but anyways, my uh, I may have to get up and and put my clothes on a dryer uh not in the dryer of course but i might have to hang them up halfway through the episode in which case talk amongst yourselves uh but for now it's time for chaos and my goodness uh you know we've mentioned our production coordinator uh michael he is backstage uh for every single one of these episodes and as he so eloquently put in his recap of episode three Hell of a first day in England. <laughs> I forgot it was your first day. Oh, yeah. In London. First just got off the boat. Happened. day. We just dropped Eventful. our bags off and then fought a lizard person. <laughs> got into a fight. Like dropped our bags off of the hoodie, went to chat to a to a journalist, and then almost got ripped apart by a lizard lady. <laughs> Didn't even have any tea or taken any sights. Uh Let's take you back a little bit. So after discovering uh, some articles, uh, some newspaper articles that Jackson Elias was interested in, because you're just following in his footsteps here, using what very little leads you have to try and figure out what was going on uh, with Jackson in England. Why was he here? And did he attract some attention that led to what happened to him in New York? How is this all tied in uh, to his exploration of... uh, what happened to the Carlisle expedition. So you go to a place called the scoop. It's kind of a tabloid. Uh, you head over to Chelsea, uh, after looking at some of the articles, uh, because you find out one of them is about, uh, some upstart artist who apparently makes very disturbing paintings. Why was Jackson interested in this? You don't know. So you arrive at the Shipley residence where you are greeted by the artist's mother, woman by the name of Bertha Shipley. She seems like a kindly old woman. Uh, She introduces you to her son, Miles, and he's a a young man. He's very gaunt. He's kind of twitchy and nervous. And, uh, you know, he's constantly like rubbing his arms and and it just seems very uh, out of place. Maybe like his mother runs the roost. Um, Anyways, they take you to the garret, the attic of their uh, little townhouse where uh, all of Miles' paintings are after you make it seem like maybe you're interested in buying one of the paintings. Um, On the way there, you notice that the house is very dark and disheveled. Margot rolls a uh, a natural world roll, actually gets an extreme success on a natural world roll to notice there's a pervasive smell throughout the house, similar to the smell that you would uh, would get at a reptile house at the zoo. That's odd. You don't see any reptiles. Uh, You get up there and Carter actually volunteers to go back down to the kitchen with Bertha to help her bring up some tea for the guests. Meanwhile, Miles goes on to explain to Vaughn, Margot, and Ferruz that he he draws his inspiration for his paintings from his dreams. He just sees things in his dreams and he um, paints them. So you look at his many, many very disturbing paintings and as well as being disturbing, they sort of remind you of things that you've seen. Margot is immediately reminded of the vision she saw very recently of a man feverishly scratching and painting in an attic and the Black Mountain. And Vaughn remembers the cave drawings from his vision. All of you make uh, sanity checks in the kitchen. Meanwhile, Carter and Bertha 
or trying to discuss perhaps Jackson Elias's interest in Miles. She's being a little cagey about remembering him. And Carter then spots what appears to be an inhuman shadow that Bertha is casting on the floor behind her and then watches in horror as she transforms into a lizard creature. Bertha comes back up to the garret with the tea without Carter. She says, oh, he needed to get some fresh air. He was feeling a little lightheaded. Uh, Feyruz then pretends to spill her tea and uses it as an excuse to explore the house uh, or, or use the bathroom. Uh, while exploring the kitchen, Feyruz finds stairs leading down into the basement. She descends into the basement after not seeing Carter outside. Uh, and Bertha said he went out there. She doesn't see him out there. She goes down the stairs. She discovers a hidden room in the basement and takes a couple of jars off the walls filled with odd substances. Then she finds a tub with like a piece of plywood or, or a cement. I can't remember what was on top of it. She lifts that off and inside finds the butchered remains and severed head of a woman. Back in the garret, Vaughn and Margot now witness Bertha's transformation into this lizardy snake creature and a fight ensues where yet again, the heroes barely survive. Um, although now you are all a little worse for the wear, some of you physically, some of you mentally. Um, and Miles Shipley is still alive. He's on the ground, sort of uh, shaking um, and, and, you know, begging for his life. Uh, please, please, please don't kill me. Please, please. I, I, you don't know. You've, you've saved me. You've saved me. If anything, you've saved me. Please don't kill me. What do you do? I feel like Margot like, is keeled over at this point and like spitting up blood. <laughs> She's yeah. like half her hit points down after this. Got, got socked a couple times. Yeah. Uh, we're not trying to kill you. Just trying to figure out what on earth is, is happening? Have you, have you ever seen, as, as she says to Miles, have, have, you, have you seen this before? Is it? Yes. Yes, she, she it, Zathasa, Zathasa is what it called itself. It, it came to me and, 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 and poisoned my mind and made me do, made me do things, forced me to do things that I did not want to do, but, in return, I was given these visions and these powers to create these these paintings. I I, I didn't mean to hurt anyone. I, I didn't mean to hurt anyone. She, it gave me no choice. I, I, I think Vaughn is just like holding his temples, like leaning against a wall. I'm just like, I... Shipley, I felt her in my mind. I felt her in my mind. I... Um... When? 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 when for God's sake, man, do you even have a mother? Did well, my mother passed a long time ago? I, I, I was just a struggling artist, and uh, nothing was working out for me. And and I, I was just out one night, and I met this man. And this man just uh, did things to me, and drugged me, and then made me go out and find things for it to eat. And then it took the form of this Bertha, and I just, I just did what I was told. You have to understand, I just did what I was told. So that thing in the tub, was that what you brought? Yes. It would get hungry. It would get hungry from time to time, and so I would just go out and bring it back food that was a prostitute. That I met uh, uh, last week, a few days ago, I can't remember. They were the ones that I would usually bring home to it. I Margo, didn't mean to. Margo spits a little bit of blood in his general direction <laughs> and is like, so let me get this straight. Uh, it gave you uh, inspiration for the paintings and you were no longer struggling but what did you give it outside of food? That was it. That was the, the deal, but it was against my will. The, the, the drug, the drug made me do it. The, the, the creature made me do it, but now you freed me. And now, now you must know that I was innocent and, and that I should just, I should be, I should be free. 
And you look you, at this guy you and you realize still he's- murdered people. I didn't do it. I didn't. I just brought them here. They, they did the killing. They did the, the, the dismembering and the eating. I think. <sighs> all right. All right. Um, Carter, this whole time, has just been like chewing his nails and looking at Margot the whole time. <sighs> and then just been like, come here. Come here. Come here. Let me. I, 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 I can fix this. I can fix this. Walks over holding her side. Yeah. Oh. Uh, come here. Uh, uh, I think it opens up again a, li- a little bit. Uh, oh, that's not what I was expecting. Okay, yeah, no, I could do this. This is fine. Let me. I'm gonna first aid you. Please don't mess it up. Uh. Watch this. I'm not. I'm not some guy that brings back street walkers. I'm a first aid uh, connoisseur. Here we go. I'm gonna roll this. Actually, before I roll this, I feel like I should roll to increase my luck. Is that possible? Can we do it? <laughs> oh, yes. We yeah, should we do, do that. that. Oh, let's <laughs> oh, forget about that. <laughs> yeah, we should do a, uh, a, 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 a oh, see yeah. if your your luck improves. As always, this is a roll that you want to fail. Um, and if you do, you will get a, a D10 to add to your luck. Woo. All right. Roll 20. I failed. That's shit. Good for Two you. Points. Yeah. Hard success for me. No more <laughs> luck. <laughs> okay. Got three points of luck. Three points of luck. All right. Great. Now, so what are you trying to do there, Carter? I'm trying to first aid uh, Margot. I want to see. It, it, so what really got wounded was when she was getting repeatedly punched in the gut. Is yes. that her <laughs> stitches opened up? For being oh. held by one monster, being punched by another. Yeah. That's right. Her stitches <laughs> opened up. All right. Aww. Yeah. So a successful okay. first aid roll here would give her back one hit point, and then she would heal one naturally. Well, she didn't take a major wound. You don't have to worry about anything else. And obviously, she's not unconscious, but... Uh, um, see what you can get. If anybody else has first aid, you can all roll, and one success works, but obviously the more rolls you get, the more chance you have of okay. fumbling. Yeah, I'll, I'll try look over. I was it. one point <laughs> away from getting a major wound. Oh, dear. Oh, Yeah, that's Oof. no good. I rolled a two under 34, motherfuckers. Whoa. Yeah. So, I don't know if that actually doesn't matter, right? I just, the success is what matters. That's an extreme success. Yeah. Um, so you do it with ease, you're able to... Uh, okay, let me just grab this. I'll just go ahead and grab this. String. Oh, be and careful. I know. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm so God. sorry. Uh, ew, ugh. And then just sort of give it a little oh. tight, tied in a little, like oh, I would tie a shoelace. Not. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's a, that seems to help. Wow. Okay. All right. Great. Thank okay. You. What did I miss? What did this fucker do? Uh, good show, Tilly this, Hass. Good this. show, Tilly Hass. Yes. You're a very sick man, Shipley. Um, I, I've seen things. Zathasa allowed me to see things. They sent my consciousness back in time to an era when their people ruled the earth. The serpent people. Yes. I saw their basalt cities. I I visited their temples. I watched their their blood rites. I witnessed their gory wars. And then I painted what I saw. Picture actor, picture of the hellish sights that my mind beheld. And and all of a sudden I was taken seriously. Maybe I maybe I am to blame. Maybe there was no Sathasa. The drug. The drug made me do it. Where is this drug now? Where did where, where did where did Sathasa, as you call her, keep it? It is reaches in his uh, pants and just throws keys onto the floor. He goes, my room, my room. Be careful. Once you take it, there's no going back. You're not really painting a, a good picture here of wanting to do this drug, to be honest. Yes, I shouldn't think I'd like to. But you, earlier you described your paintings as the, as the subject of your dreams. Now you're saying you're... <laughs> this is what... What it showed you our world was in the past. They told me to say dreams. But it was all too real. Zathasa was a high sorcerer. And this drug... Although it felt as if it was just my mind traveling back there. I just felt like I was there. I felt like I could touch and smell and see these sights 
in the time before, a time that I did not know existed until I traveled there. If, if you do, try it. Just don't use all of it, because I, I need it. I need it. I need to go back there. I need to go back and see. Does he seem addicted to it? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, oh. Shipley, you're a sick man, I said. This, whoever or whatever this thing is got its, got its hooks in you. It got, got its claws in, into me, not into my flesh, but into my mind. So I, I am, I'm inclined to, I, I know from, from dire experience a little of what you've, you've had, but you, you can't go back there. You can't possibly take this drug again. You need help, man. Yes. Now, this is a tricky thing, right? Because you're here following up on this lead that Jackson Elias, something he was interested in, and now you've uncovered a, a murderer that's mm-hmm. also linked to some otherworldly shit. Yeah. Not like you can go yeah. strolling into Scotland Yard with this. Right. This, okay. So I'm, I'm curious what the plan is here, and then obviously you've got a house to explore. This guy is beyond gone. He needs a sanitarium. Right. Mm-hmm. But he also uh, is responsible for the death of some ladies of the night. Maybe some men of the night. I don't know if he discriminates and necessarily. Tillinghast, I'll add, was taken downstairs in a trance. Like, you were next, buddy. Like, this yeah. Is- yeah, wait a minute. God damn it. Hold on. <laughs> were we going to be fed to Zahasta? I got a question for this Zahasta. guy before we talk grand strategies. So, first of all, did I miss it? Were you born from an egg? Did I miss? Did you guys cover the. The general, how this worked with the, uh, your mother? <laughs> that wasn't my mother. That wasn't your mother. Okay, sorry, I was so focused on the serpent people yeah. called right, Sarkasa. Okay. Uh, We've Margo. been through all this, Tilling. What don't you understand, man? Margo was bleeding out. No one else he fucking cared. He was doing care. a very good job with the helping me, so. Yes, I now say. listen, now that we've covered that, because that was question number one. Question yes. number two, she looked like this the whole time, or she can change into other human beings? Like, she can. Was she tied to just this one look? My question no. is, are there more of these things and can they look like anything all the time? Can they shift human form to different types of humans or what? They could look like anything. When I met Sadasa, he was a man. Um, at least that's what he looked like. And he swore that he could show me things to paint, which no artist could ever capture. I was in my cups. And so I, I, I trusted him. He had a silver tongue. And then... I saw his true form, and he went into my mind, and and made me, made me take that medicine, and then I needed it, and then he came up with the idea to be my mother. Birth, birth and, and yeah, right, okay, okay, and, yeah. Right, but it could take many up. forms. I never saw another one except what I saw when I went back. There were many. They ruled the world. They ruled this world in the time before the gods. Yes, yes, of What course. were in those jars in the was, basement? Weren't there like, wasn't there like a wall of jars? I stole one. You were in the basement. That's what she uses to make the drug. I hope you didn't destroy them. I need that. I need that. I think I know how to replicate the recipe. I could, I could make more. I could make more and then there could be enough for all of us. For all of us. Maybe we could, we could travel back and never, and never return. And then, then I wouldn't be guilty of, of, of the crime of associating with this sorcerer. Yes. Yes, that is what we'll do. We'll all, we'll all take the drug and we'll go back. I don't think taking any more of this drug is going to make you any less responsible for it what's happened already. Wasn't he kind of standing in front of a door in the attic? Yeah, there was a door up in his garret. At one point? Yes, if we go back to our VTT, you'll see that in the garret, uh, there is a, a single door that is unguarded. And he's, um, if you, do you say that aloud or you just talk amongst? Well, I'm thinking like, I feel like we want to explore the whole house, but I also don't want to leave him alone. Maybe like lock him up here while we explore the rest of the house, but also up in or the attic, there is that door he was saying. He goes of. with us, but we have firearms. Yeah. No funny business. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he, um, I, I, I don't feel comfortable leaving him anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So well, I, I, I we'll lean, explore the space. I'll just sit here. I lean to Carter and I'm like, 
that door. He was he was trying to block it before. We should see what's in there before we leave this room. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Maybe we should take check. him yeah. with us. Check it out. Oh, I should mention really quickly. Uh, while I was downstairs, there is a tub with remains inside of said uh, this creature that was eating. But then also there's a wall of uh, said in drugs. Oh. Just to catch you up over, I know everybody was busy. I know, somehow I knew that even though I forgot that you never told us that. Dead, dead people and drugs, got it. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, let's... Well, that's one room down, unless you all want to see it. <laughs> yes, I'm good. I, I, uh, I don't terribly wish to, to see what you've seen, but I suppose we should um, see where these keys lead us. Yes. Come on, Shipley, step lively, you're coming with us. Yeah, who's and got the I piece? Point, I point my gun yeah. over, I like, no funny business. All right, I'm, I'm outnumbered. You've you've saved me. You've saved me. I, I have no no interest in doing you any harm, and I'm I'm sorry. Mm. I just she she was they he we were trying to separate you to perhaps um, have food for the weeks to come. And then I wouldn't have had to go out and bring more victims back. Yes. Uh, she was it's just, all over now, Shipley. It's all over just, now. You're a real you're saint. Just, I was doing what I was told by my mother, by Siddhartha. I was just doing what I was told. <laughs> so you go upstairs with this crazy person. <laughs> and uh, he watches you sort of approach that door and he's like, you, you don't want to go in there. I'm not allowed to open it unless she says. What's in there? Oh. Uh- She's no longer alive, so I don't think we need to. It's 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 the it's it's, it's the big one. That's what? what I was I was told to call it the, the big the big painting, the one that was really going to um, make waves. But it really wasn't for the public; it was for um for them. It's called the the serpent's altar. It is uh, it's unfinished, but. When finished, it's a gateway to there. That's why they want you to paint these paintings. Well, we, we, we must see it. It's not. It's not ready. It's not ready. And um, sometimes it's hard to look at. But you you do so at your own risk. Uh. Right. Well, you heard it. the man. Um, Carter's gonna stare at the floor as we walk into this room. <laughs> Margo okay. wants to look at it. <laughs> um, I think Vaughn will sort of linger with Shipley and almost like whispering to him, you've, you've undergone a terrible ordeal. You've been the subject of, of demonic influence. They have attempted to pervert your spirit and turn you from the path of, of, of good. There is, uh, there is hope for you yet. There is salvation yet. Well, you're not responsible entirely for your actions. The will was not altogether um, aligned with the demonic force that, that, that breathed its will into yours. And will, will, will see to it that you receive the help that you so, you, you so drastically need. He leans in really close. He's like, you're not going to eat me, are you? Oh. No, 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 man. And uh, Vaughn will kind of uh, awkward hug. <laughs> no, 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 you're safe now. He leans away from you and just weeps like a baby. You fiddle with the keys and find the one that opens this door in the garret. Margo. Yeah. When we look at this painting, uh, if I seem odd at any point, I give you permission to slap me as hard as you can across the face. You know what? Same. Um, make sure it's the face, so not not the side, and not too right hard. Right. Right really right. feels like an evergreen statement with this crew. Mm. Just <laughs> see. I feel like whatever it is, we will be able to handle it. I'm looking at the floor. I I, I suggest everyone else look at this painting via the floor. <laughs> You open the door and you see a dirty sheet covering uh, an easel 
with a canvas atop it. And nothing else. Tell me everything, guys. Is it horrible? What does it look like? (laughs) There's a sheet sheet over it. I can picture it. I'm going to pull this off, so make sure you don't look, no matter how much we scream. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. All right. And just for the record, I'm not going to slap one of you guys. I feel like that would be uh, not very polite. I would rather take a slap in the face than whatever horrors this thing might do, but... <clears throat> okay, well, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. All right. All right. Here we go. Ready? <sighs> Ready. One, two, uh... three. She pulls off the... the Dirty old drape. sheet. Yeah. You pull the dirty old sheet off, and you do see a painting that is not finished. However, uh, perhaps the reason for that is that it is far more meticulous than any of the other paintings that you've seen of his. It is a, um, like, landscape portrait that looks like it's been worked on for years. Uh, It is so heavily detailed, um, but it, like, isn't finished on the outside, like they're working from the inside out. And you see what looks like a swampy area completely infested with serpents but the serpents are anthropomorphic like this Sathasa. Some are dressed in elegant robes. Um, I believe one of the paintings you saw had like one of a serpent person in a robe um, while some are naked. There's a small island in the center of this swamp Uh, upon which uh, stands a single stone altar Um, and all sorts of flora surrounding uh, the scene that you have never seen like it defies human comprehension it's not like oh maybe that's like a tree of some sort it's like it's you you have no idea what's going on Um, who's looking is it just Margot and Feyruz yeah, uh, I have my, uh, just like a, a journal out to write, jot down any details, um, important details I would I would think were important for in this painting. Okay. You're, you're just kind of like looking and, and maybe just stream of consciousness writing. And Margot, I don't know if you're just taking it in or if you've got your sketchbook out or, or whatever, but both of you, as you're watching it, you just start to hear like this like sounds of bugs perhaps right in your ear and then you start to feel this like this like vibration within your body this like like your whole body is shaking from within and you start smelling um that reptile smell all over again, but it's much more intense. And you smell uh, mud and sulfur, and you you kind of like try to maybe shake yourself out of it, but suddenly you feel like you're within the painting, and, but then you blink again and you're standing there looking at it, and then, then you feel like you're back within it, and then you're back outside looking, and then suddenly there's this overpowering feeling of something standing behind the easel, like this tall black figure that seems to loom out to grab you and pull you into the painting. Um, I need a sanity roll. Oh, here you. we go. Oh, man. Okay. I got a 45 under 95. Okay. Who is so sane? The two people that should be looking at this painting right now. I don't know why. I really want to chip away at that. (laughs) I know. I got a regular success. Okay. All right. So you don't lose any sanity. However, Carter, if you've been asking them, like, what do you see? What do you see? You just keep asking and there's no response. And so you realize they're, there's some sort of, they're like in a trance like state. Maybe you need to shake them out of it or punch them, whatever favorite suggested. Hold on. I've got to, uh, (laughs) Yeah, Carter's just sort of like, well, I'll tell you what, this floor is filthy. This thing hasn't been swept in weeks. Jesus Christ, ladies. Ladies. And Carter's sort of like, 
is <laughs> turning his back so that he doesn't have to look at the painting, but it's sort of so that he can look at them without seeing it. Uh, and sees what? Just sees them... Just sees them staring at it, kind of like Ghostbusters 2. It's like... Oh, yeah. Some yeah. Vigo shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just, uh, guys, girls, and starts, like, doing snippy snaps in their fists. Hey. Hey, <laughs> Feyrus. What happens? Tell me everything. <laughs> um, if you physically touch them, uh-huh. they snap out of it. Okay, yeah, so some light... Now, this is... I'm doing this just lightly poking... Shoulders, pokey poke. Once you physically touch them, those hands that are coming out to get you, they look like long, bony, black fingers just <laughs> get pulled back, and you're just staring at a unfinished What is painting. going on? What is happening? Did you see that? It smells wretched in there. In there? What do you mean in there? Uh, <sighs> I think that the painting must almost be done. <laughs> oh, no. That was, um... That was... And she just starts, like, dry heaving, like... Oh. <laughs> well, I'm uh, sure it's nothing compared to this floor. I told you it was unfinished. Please don't judge it. I'll finish it. I'll, I'll get to finishing it. And then oh, no, 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 um, no. I think you can, should... Um, we can all walk through. Oh, no, thank you. No. Uh, also, Pass. I think that there was someone there assisting us. We didn't need to walk through. We, we were about to be pulled through. Um, we can't talk. Uh, Let's put this sheets back over it. How about this? I got a couple ideas. Margo, what, you want to take a picture of this thing? Just so we got a... You got your camera? Oh, yes. I have my camera. Um, mm. I try to take a picture of it really quick without getting sucked into it again. Like, oh, if you see me, go out. So if it's touch me again. Uh, all right. You take a picture of it. All right. Then what I think we should do is burn it right now. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> We can't afford. Did you see what that thing just did to us? We, what, do we want more of those that? things? No. Let's just slash it up, burn it, whatever the fuck. It's done. This guy's not finishing this. Agreed. Yeah. Maybe you want to do. If to you're gonna do you. anything to it, maybe you don't want him to see it, knowing what his mental state is. I might, uh, being completely aligned with this way of thinking, <laughs> um, Vaughn, like, like, mm, yes, um. Come, Shipley. Let's um, let's get you out into the open air. I think the uh, the darkness and must in this place has done you no good. You know, you need some vigor, man. And um, he'll start to lead him away from the door while looking back at you, like destroy it. <laughs> He's just like everyone's a critic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. It's ter- terrible when people don't understand the, the artistic temperament. Um, all right, so you take him out, and uh, you guys just destroy the painting. And with ease. It doesn't, like, fight you back. Arms Great. don't grow out of it and punch you. Uh, it, Bummer. It is destroyed, but you do feel, like, very strange. Now, obviously, Carter, you didn't experience what Margot and Feyruz experienced, but you've been around uh, weird Cthulhu Mythos stuff enough to, like, just feel its power. Um, so you destroy the painting, tear it to shreds, burn it, whatever you want to do with it. Yeah. yeah. Um, all those other paintings are there. Do you want to destroy all of the paintings? I would like to destroy those paintings, but here's the thought that I just had is that he sold paintings like this to others. How do we how do we get a hold of how do we get any knowledge of sales oh, or yeah, we, like can, a we, list? we can Yeah, because even if we do destroy all of these paintings, they they, they still exist others that this may continue. I wonder if every painting is like a portal, um, or if it was just a way for him to make money to continue supporting the lizard. Um, is there like any sort of role I can make on the paintings to see if there's anything else? Well, we looked at them before, them? right? Nothing. Yeah, they all happened. provoke sanity rolls. I mean, you guys are still oh, are like. Okay growing in your Cthulhu Mythos skill, so those are very hard checks, I think. Yeah. Probably the highest among you is a three, a five, someone. Uh, mm-hmm. So very, very low uh, chance. What about an occult role? Could I do uh, you could role? certainly do an occult role, yeah. All right. Nah, I failed. Like, big fail. Like, I can't uh, can't spend anything <clears throat> to make this a <laughs> um, can, can, mm. Yeah. I, I might try on the way out, if that's okay. Yeah. 
Ah, oh, curses. Me too. Um, maybe even when we go into his room, maybe he has a ledger of mm-hmm. who he sold. It's worth it's worth looking into. I think. You can see those paintings out of the corner of your eye, whether you go back to them and really inspect them, Carter, you really didn't have a chance to, and you probably don't want to. Um, but, uh, you know, you think to yourself that, like, they, there there was a... It made you kind of lose yourself for a moment, right? So if someone else purchased it, it probably did that to them as well. Do, does repeated exposure kind of uh, eat away at the mind of the owner of these paintings? Maybe. Um... Is it possible that it's a portal? That's also possible as well. I think what the most disturbing part is is how that uh, you it was reminiscent of visions that you have had as of late um, or ever since your meeting in Peru. Um, and also like that feeling you had, Margot and Feirouz, when that figure was coming out, as you're settling back in, it you just this the one thing that it reminds you of is that moment when Larkin uh, the the sort of that voice came out of him, uh, that feeling that you're being like watched by something powerful. That that's that lingering feeling you have. The same thing when that thing just reached out at you. If if what Miles said was true about him needing this this drug to have these visions and to paint these paintings, then I think we definitely need to destroy those bottles in the basement. Mm-hmm. I took and one because I didn't know what it was, but now knowing what it does, I don't think this is well, safe. Did, in did he way. say the stuff that was down there was just the stuff that she used to make the drug, and that we have not actually seen the final? He version? said the drug was in his room, right? Yeah, but oh, I yes. agree. But we she... should destroy the ingredients too. I don't think that hurts. Yeah, yeah, like maybe uh, Sethasa was using that as a lab as well, you know, because you see, you, you saw a bunch of other things around the jars and you didn't recognize a lot of it, so it must have been like ingredients. Um, all right, so head down to his room and you have keys. Um, so let's see here. Oh, yeah, I can reveal it on the map too. Do, 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 do. Um, so the keys to his room. Open it up. Do, 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 do. Boom. It's a mess in here. He um, needs to do laundry. He's like, this is what my uh, my room look like. I'm currently wearing underwear no everywhere. Under- <laughs> my bloomers are dirty. <laughs> um, find my notes here. All right, so do, 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 do. just posters of Lamborghinis. <laughs> right. So, do you come with the car? All right, upper floor. Uh, <laughs> Look at how much shin that woman is showing. <laughs> I can say, you know, just to kind of move things along, if you open the other doors on this floor, they're, they're just all rooms um, that are uh, empty, except for uh, Shipley's room. They're uh, just dusty with very scant furnishings. They look like they haven't been used in a long time. Um, but that fourth bedroom down the bottom is uh, where Shipley has been staying. And you see bed clothes and all sorts of shit lying on the floor. There's a bed, a wardrobe, a dressing stand, and a wall closet. Um, what do you want to do? Let's I'll ransack this room and yeah. search it. Yeah. Tear yeah. this place <laughs> apart. <laughs> Fuck this give place. Some, <laughs> give me some spot hidden rolls. <laughs> Let's see. Spot hidden, where are you? I got a 34 under 69. Is nice. That, ooh, it's nice. a hard. Ooh, that is a hard. It's hard. It's I got a hard. regular. It's hard. 69. Um, all right, so, Marco, you guys are in there just, um, obviously one of you is still uh, keeping an eye on Miles or you're taking turns. And, uh, Margo, you, you're you in the closet looking around and you see uh, there's a hat box kind of like on a shelf. Uh, and you move the hat box to the side and behind that is a uh, uh, a lacquered box. You open it up and there's a syringe, a single syringe sitting in it. And it's full of a, uh, a greenish colored liquid. And you can see that the syringe has been used so often, uh, there's like a line of green uh, sort of embedded like for a specific dosage. Um, 
it's been used so often. And if Miles is there, he's like, oh, be careful with that, be careful with that. I'm, we're, we're, I'm gonna need that. I'm gonna need that. This is plenty, though. There's plenty we can we can all share. Yes, yes, of course, Shipley. Mm. So, oh, this, this right here, she still remembers. He freshly punched her in the face like an hour ago. That's true. <laughs> um, I don't know, everyone. What should we do with this? Maybe we, uh, Flush it down the old loo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, unless there's anything to, like, learn from it, which I'm not sure, like, what we would, I feel like we'd want to dispose of this yeah. stuff. But what would be the best way, do you think? Like, there's no reason to keep it, right? Unless you wanted it. Unless you I mean, wanted a party. There was a chemical... <laughs> if, if there was some sort of chemical property that could... Could, um send the mind backward and forward in time. It is, it is, I confess, the, the Inquisitor far to me is rather intrigued. Do you think there's someone we could take it to to have it analyzed? I don't know if it's safe in anybody's hands at this point, but I'm, I'm willing to, to um, you know, entertain any options. I mean, I feel like we should keep at least a vial of it just to... Add to our collection of mysterious I mean, liquids. Because I, yes. I mean, I took this, so <laughs> as I hold up the jar, mm. so I, I don't blame you for wanting to know what it is. Yes. Let's just have it, just in case, in case we need it to like convince somebody that we're on their team. Uh, if or, we need or to, or at least have evidence of what we saw today, because how else are we going to? Who will we put in a madhouse if we? Yeah. Everything else, let's fucking trash it. Let's destroy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's somehow take a vial of it without the syringe. Yeah, let's not poke ourselves with this. Thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's doses, and you could just destroy the rest. Um, you know, I've always been so, Carter, you've so got clumsy. Your, your, yeah, Carter, <laughs> you got your jacket full of like <laughs> it's not, oh, my perfumery. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, all right. I'll put you one should have next like a little to, bottle, right? Just remember, yeah, I gotta make sure I remember. <laughs> not, it's not the CK one. It's the <laughs> lizard hallucinogen uh, time travel juice. Chanel number five with a little yep. bit of a... Uh, that there. Um, it's just strips from magazines that he's torn out and stuck in his <laughs> In terms of what else is here, you know, you do have like this, not all of you went to the basement to look around. Um, so there is, there are those jars and there are ingredients down there. Like if any of you had chemistry or some kind of science skills, you could try to analyze that. Then the only other thing you're really going to deal with is the fact that there is a um, dismembered body, Dead body down, there. Uh, down yeah. there and the body of the lizard creature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a oh. creature. Burn the house with Miles in it and call it a day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no, it's, this is really, really tricky. You, like, literally Tintin. just arrived in England. The least of your worries was sneaking shotguns in. Now you've got a, a, mur a, a murder, a crime scene. Yes, um, perhaps we all uh, break for the break for the hills. Get, get Mr. Shipley to, uh, to a sanitarium or some residence where he can get the help he so richly needs. And then perhaps Scotland Yard receives an anonymous tip about what's been seen in this place. Yes. Is that like a passages or like a rehab? You know, so, so yes. I was thinking about this, I was thinking about this when we were talking to him. You know, we've got a couple different articles uh, that we've seen when we got here about like beast attacks or whatever. There was something in Scotland. Yes. And there was something in the, I just looked at it, it was like the Midlands or something like that, which I'm assuming is not Scotland. That's like halfway between is that lesser edale i don't know one. for some reason i just assume ross knows uh <laughs> i mean it is i think the midlands are yeah they're in the middle of England. okay yeah. <laughs> this is context clues yeah. uh so so i just don't know if like i would hope that's a weird thing to say that those monsters are these lizard people otherwise we've got other monsters uh to deal with too um so i don't know if it's worth like reporting to the people that wrote the the article like we think we found a monster that could you know like there's that angle maybe we keep this information to ourselves for the time being until we have well, any better idea of what to do with it miles seems unhinged what if we just leave and let it be sorted out as it would be he's crazy he may have killed things. 
I think, yeah. He's out of drugs. Smash all his drugs and leave him with his lizard matron. <laughs> to figure it out. That's a good punishment. Uh, um, <clears throat> I think, I hate to say, I, I mean, I think that's our best option at the moment. If we entangle ourselves in this or tell the wrong person, mm-hmm. we might be putting ourselves in, in harm's way. I mean, even more so than we already are. <laughs> what if, before we leave, so he forgets that we're here, we give him some? Oh, we juice him up. <laughs> to I'm, continue I'm, painting? I'm sorry what to be here. Stop the to paint. We destroy his Margo's paintings. Margo's going full, like, audition. <laughs> like, <laughs> if, 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 is Vaughn part of this conversation? Because I'm like, I've got him outside, maybe. It would be hilarious if he's there listening to our debate. Yeah. Because I, if Vaughn is hearing this, then he's he has thoughts. I'm sure Vaughn is going to be privy to the final decision. They're not going to just come out and be like, yeah, we're we took like, care what? of it. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just... It's just, if, if we leave, he'll he'll tell people that four of we were here. Um, like, how do we leave without also, like, er, like erasing the fact that we've been here, sort of? Uh, well, I mean, it's it's... First of all, nobody really knows who we are. Two, this is the, uh, I hate to say it, but he's not a very, be hard for to believe anything with anybody talking about lizard people and, and the like. But we should probably get rid of the lizard person though, if we're going that route. I mean, maybe just dropping him off at a, a a home. We light sort. everything on fire. <laughs> I mean, it just feels like the, the, the more down. we can delay other lizard people finding out details about us from him, the better. Uh, so if we tuck him away at some loony bin, uh, <laughs> then maybe they'll, it'll prolong that from happening. Right. But that would I- require telling said sanitarium yeah, I think about him. I, yeah. I'm, I'm here. With, I, I, I kind of agree with Margot. I think we should just, just destroy what we can. His, even his paint supplies, everything. <laughs> because we don't want him just like... Being happy. Yeah, getting inspired. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just leaving. Are we thinking fire pits for the lizard body, or...? There is a tub. We could just throw the lizard in the tub with whoever else's unfortunate body is down there. And someone will put two and two together. They'll be like, oh, this dismembered body was created because of this dead need... lizard person. Clearly this lizard person <laughs> killed oh, this person. Oh, I Case see. closed, Danny. I see. Fire to die. Okay. Yeah, let's yeah. do that. Let's... Right. Uh, where do we start? Should we just... Finish so, up in here and <laughs> continue. I mean, we need to continue searching all the other rooms regardless. Well, Troy said but, the rest of this is just kind of. Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of hand waving the rest of it. You know, it's downstairs. Yeah. Did, did anyone have chemistry or any type of science? To uh, is that even a thing? Mm, yeah. yeah. Or sci- you, basically, there's science, and your science could be specific chemistry. It could be pharmacy. It could be biology. But if that's, I don't think that's in any of your nope. grounds. Mm-hmm. No sciences. Yeah, nope. it's a weird, it's a weird mix. I mean, there's, and remember, oh, there was see. also um, mystic symbols all over the walls, right. um, and and the jars with dark substances. You now realize were were connected to this drug, and of course, the tub was covered in uh, a large sheet of metal. But you see all of these ingredients. It looks like there's, like. Every color of the rainbow, uh, liquids, and then like fossils and shit, <laughs> like that were being ground down to be added into this. Whoa. It, it, it's just, it's otherworldly. And the symbols could, are the symbols, the recipe, like it's, it's crazy. Yeah, could time. I do an occult roll on this and maybe being like, mm, yes, uh, lizard's tooth, that's an ingredient for this thing that yeah. I just happened to know. About. If anything, an occult roll will let you know if it's anything that like you've ever, yeah. you like even slightly recognize from your I have newt, I've occult. heard of this, <laughs> uh, except I failed again. Yeah, I mean, you just look at it and hearing what he's saying, if his mind was transported millennia back to a time when serpents ruled, ruled the earth, maybe these are symbols. This is like a pre-civilization language. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's clean this up here a little bit. So we've got 
Yvonne in the hallway with... I, th I think I'm outside. Ding dong. I'm fully outside, like, trying to ply yeah, him with a cigarette. And it's like... We're oh, destroying okay. his painting yes. stuff. Yeah. Okay, so I do outside, remember outside. from yeah, I do remember from last episode that when I was first seeing the, these symbols and whatever, when I first went into the basement, that I did write some of these down. Yeah, I think you yeah. etched them or take a rubbing. So yeah. maybe we 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 put a pin in that. Yeah. For later. Season five, when your Cthulhu Mythos score is fifty and your san yeah. max sanity is forty two, you'll be able to. <laughs> Then uh, that'll learn him. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I think Vaughn would live for a 42. Oh, we'll see. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so he, so they're outside. We are smashing, we're smashing vials. We're smashing except for one. jars yeah. of stuff. And, okay. yeah. you know, and I would he's imagine... not seeing this because he's outside. Because mm -hmm. he would yeah. freak the fuck out. Okay, right. You guys have been warned about the body, um, so I'm not going to make you roll a sanity roll because it's not. That was going to be my next. <laughs> yeah, it's not Chris really a surprise. I mean, obviously it's jarring, but at this point you've seen a lot of dead we bodies. We went through a pit of bodies yeah. after like yeah. three days of knowing each other. That initial like, oh god, it's a decapitated body, but it is pretty eerie. There's just this like uh, scantily clad, dismembered body, and the, and the woman's head is severed. His eyes are open, just staring. It's just like at the end of Clue when they're just shuffling from room to room and they just see like <laughs> another dead body and then they just silently move to the next one and see <laughs> another dead body and they're just like used to it. <laughs> um, so we, what is your plan? Are you going to just try and like dissolve the, the body of the serpent and the uh, oh. well, victim or, or are you like, just going to... Chop it up and leave it in there and hopefully it just looks like... An just animal? cover it back up. Why are we going to chop it up? It yeah, I just say it never human? happened. It's What's just a middle? giant doormat that we're sweeping a corpse under. <laughs> just... The tub had a covering. We'll just, yeah, cover, just put it, in there, it right back up, up and just right. whistle our way out of that. Light Two a Yankee candle in there. and get the fuck out. Metal sheet. Okay. And then Miles, you're going to bring Miles to a sanitarium or are you gonna, you're going to uh, like OD him here? I... <laughs> Um, if if that plan is even so much as like we destroyed, we already that. said we destroyed everything. I except didn't for what mean I got. Too, too much. I was Vaughn just saying. Is a Christian, yes. And yeah. and, and and aside, whatever. Um, it hardly fulfills the message of the Beatitudes to uh, leave one of the least of our brothers here to his to 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 suffering and death. There was a time when my, my wits were rather loosed, as, as you recall, but you did not abandon me to my fate. But, but uh, Yeah, but you're cool. You're yeah. my friend. <laughs> granted, granted, <laughs> granted, but... Um, also, an asylum, I mean, these days, asylums are not great places. <laughs> no, back then, yeah. Want to go. Sort of <laughs> a big metal box on his head? Well, really, we're not, we're not oh. full 18th century bedlam here. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> oh, right, right. but um, I mean, certainly, uh, he may... I mean, he may be lobotomized or something, but, uh... Yeah. This man has been through... Been through something that I, I, I fear as though I've, I've experienced only a fraction of. <clears throat> but yes, to a sanitarium. Let us... Let us leave him in another's care. Yeah. Should, should, should All we right. bring him there or make a, make a, make a call, like a... I don't think I'll we want anyone call. around here. I, I do we have to convince him? Do we have to do some kind of like, hey, you're free now, buddy. Why don't you <laughs> come with us? I oh, this I'd isn't like a restaurant. This is an insane asylum. Get him in a cab and take him to a hospital. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So let's just, uh, we'll say you, you do uh, convince him and he doesn't take much convincing. It's almost like he was taking orders from Sathasa and now he's taking orders from you. He's, mm -hmm. He was under some sort of spell beyond this uh, drug where, uh, you know, his master, he listened to his master, and it's almost like you are the new masters. And so he, he, he goes with you. Maybe you ply him with promises of more of this uh, drug or whatever, mm -hmm. and he's just maybe in the, in the back of the car looking and wincing at the light. Um, and uh, you pull up in front of a, a local asylum. <laughs> or, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you find a place. I mean, you, you probably know a good place to bring him. And, uh, you know, I don't want to get into the weeds too much with this conversation. I think it's pretty clear when you bring him in 
Um, but I am curious what your, what your sort of, uh, what do you say? I think I don't um, wanna, we don't need to play the whole thing out, but it's like, yeah. this is I my cousin. Definitely like, <laughs> not tell them anything of our no. own personal experience. Absolutely not. This so is I'm an indigenous character yeah. that we've, that we were accosted by. He's clearly in need of some terrible, uh, he's clearly experienced something terrible and in need of some drastic sedation and th- He's addicted and to something aid. coming down from it. I like yeah. this. Okay. Yeah. This is a good, Withdrawals. this is a good ploy. Um, okay. And, uh, for the sake of argument, I'm gonna say they don't ask too many questions. It's pretty clear. They can smell. He just smells terrible. Um, and he, he's not looking right. And maybe he starts spouting off some of the same stuff that he was saying to you about uh, the, the past and, and the lizard and, and, and mother. And uh, they're like, all right, just this way. Thank you so much. A sad much. case. A sad case. Yes. yes. Well, thank you. You are, uh, you are quite kind. And we'll say it's like a uh, nun. Uh, it was quite, uh, quite kind of you to bring uh, this young man in, uh, we'll be sure to give him the care uh, that he needs. Um, uh, and uh, do, you, do you wish to be uh, kept in contact with about his care? Yes. Uh, wouldn't hurt to know if something crazy happened. Uh, right. Certainly. If, if he takes a turn for the better, or, or, or I dare say a turn for the worse, then um, you can find us, contact us at this number. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, God bless you all. And Thank you, sister. You leave while two bodies lie in that house, sharing a tub. Just whistling loudly. Ugh. Broken paintings everywhere. Uh, I had mentioned this to you guys pre show um, uh, that uh, this sort of. Uh, part of the adventure uh, unlike before we had to get through all of America to do a development phase there may be uh, sort of points throughout the season where there'll be mini development phases and this is one of them so uh, you guys are going to get a little sandy back maybe a little boost and some skills right after this quick break oh All right, we're back. Uh, I like this. I like having sort of mid-season, not even mid-season, f- four episode in uh, chances to improve your investigator because when you wait 20 episodes to do it, that's fun and all, but like it'd be nice to get an increase to your skills a little more uh, frequently. And so even if this isn't uh, sort of based on what you guys do, I may find times to do this from, from time to time just to give you a little edge uh, as you get better. I mean, the fact that you've survived now multiple combats is crazy. Uh, I think that the newest version of masks of Nyarlathotep that we're using kind of toned it down a lot from the uh, the original where people were dying like every single session. Um, but still, you guys have been incredibly lucky and it's going to be real sad uh, uh, when someone yeah, gets Let's not talk about it. It's never going to happen. Like, we're never going to happen. You live forever. I mean, that would be something. That would, we'd, uh, Chaosium would uh, have to uh, memorialize the show if you guys made it through the entire book. <laughs> if yeah. Feyruz dies, you pull up that spell I have of making zombies and yeah. I come back. Oh, zombie as zombie Fe- 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 mm-hmm. We'll just convert it to a pulp campaign, and now Zombie Feruz is your actual uh, traveling companion. Uh, <laughs> I had you guys roll uh, during the break your skills to see if you'd improve any of them. Uh, so again, the way it works with Call of Cthulhu, every six, every time you succeed at a skill, you check it, and then when it comes time for a development phase, you have a chance to get better in that skill. It shows that you're like the more you use it, the more chance you have of like bettering yourself at it. Did you guys uh, improve on any skills? significantly just uh, one i got a whole whopping one point added to my brawl nice <laughs> yeah. sick i just added a little to first aid and spot hidden okay spot hidden Sweet. Yeah, that's cool um great and then uh you're gonna get some rewards for uh this little sidetrack scenario here for uh putting an end or a temporary end at least to sathasa's plans you temporary? each gain 1d6 sanity points yes <laughs> Ooh, oh. dad, dad needs those. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Got you just all roll and then decide who gets the six. Uh, now, let's see what you what you get here for that. Um, and then for, uh, you know, saving Miles and, and getting him 
into an asylum, you actually will gain a flat plus two on top of that one d six. Had you chosen, uh, uh, you know, to forcefully Margo's overdose plan. him, Margot's <laughs> plan, you would have lost some sanity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that sounds like we would have had some fun. But that's some fun. I know. Marco's got a death wish for like trying I'm to get I'm just here to play the now. game. So then I get to yeah. add three points then to my sanity. Great. Did you roll a one on the D6? I did. Brutal. <laughs> Um, I didn't roll because I had 95 of 96 sanity, so I just put it to 96. Just gave yourself the yeah, one. Yeah, my sanity's yeah. all, like, <laughs> super high. <sanity. laughs> wow, that's great. After adding six po- after adding the five points that I just gained, I now have 37 points of sanity. <laughs> wow. I'm glad you got five, though. That's great. Later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I would assume... Uh, man, you guys really. Sometimes the first day you arrive in town, it's you kind of lay low. Maybe you get dinner and then just go back to the hotel. You guys have had a day. I imagine you want to call it a night. Girl, we've had a day. Yeah. 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 And I'm hurt. Let's go go. So yeah. I definitely want to lay another, down, get some Get tea. you another health point. Back. Yeah, if yeah. you rest, you'll get another mm-hmm. HP back. Um,. Let's let's kind of d- dig into uh, the conversations that we're having here before bed. Wait, more you, importantly, yeah. is there a prohibition going on in the UK as well? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, you drink whatever you want. Bars oh, are open yeah. all night. Yep. Um, you can have a lukewarm beer anywhere you like. <laughs> <laughs> a lukewarm, carbonation-free beer awaits. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if you guys want to maybe uh, want to hit the bar, it's just, un- uh, it's just an unspoken thing. I just want to make sure we can. I wonder how that pisco sour is tasting. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Uh, that'd be very interesting if all of a sudden you're uh, you're sitting at the bar. You can't help but think like, oh, kind of reminds you of the bar Cordano back in Peru. Mm. Uh, maybe one of you orders a pisco sour, and you're thinking about what lies ahead. You had a couple of leads: the Penhue Foundation, obviously. Um, we found a card in Jackson Elias's apartment, or, uh, or no, it was in, uh, wait, was it, did you find it in Jackson's apartment or did he, yeah, I think you did, uh, about the current director, uh, Edward Gavigan of the Penhue Foundation. Obviously, Sir R.B. Penhue was part of the Carlisle Expedition, so that's kind of a big one, uh, worth investigating. But then when you went to the scoop, you found these articles about, uh, you know, it came from the fog, and then this thing yeah. in the Midlands you were talking about that's in a city known as Lesser Edale. I might be mispronouncing that. Uh, that's, uh, uh, Vaughn would know, that's about 170 miles away. So that would be a real trip if you wanted to investigate that. Whereas this thing, this artist in Chelsea was just a hop, skip, and a jump away. And then there was the uh, other article about the. Uh, uh, Oh yeah, that that was the one. Uh, it's like a attacks in Scotland, right? Um, I don't know if it was. Scotland. There was a monster shot. Yeah, it was like a lived. cryptid thing. Yeah, yeah, the killer bee shot, but still alive. That's the one that's about 170 miles away okay. in Lesser Edale, yep. and, and there then was Scotland. It almost had me. Yeah, the Glasgow resident had an unwelcome encounter with a monster of darkness. Uh, so that's pretty far away. But the other one that Slaughter is... Slaughter continues war oh, yeah. offered. Someone's yes. killing people. Scotland that's Yard. Scotland Yard yes. Someone got stabbed <laughs> yeah. in the heart or something. Yeah, so Scotland Yard and the, the Penhue Foundation are both here in London. Uh, if you were to follow up on this very uh, loose thread... Uh, uh, in Scotland, that would be a big journey, and then Lessery Dale would probably be a day's journey away. Um, also, let's not forget a little place called Eagles Grange, uh, and of yes, course, Eagles, Eagles Grange. Grange. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, what do you think, old Vaughn? What do you think? If we went over to Eagles Grange, do you think you'd maybe feel a little more sane? Maybe you know, like being back home, get a couple yes, extra. Perhaps. Theoretical points of sanity back. Home has its uh, has its certain its certain comforts as well as its um, unforeseen stresses. But yes, um, we could we there there is of course accommodation to be made for all of you if you wish to come to uh, to my family's home. Yeah, I want to eat off a of silver plates. Uh, <laughs> I would think that maybe as she's uh, says to uh, <laughs> um, maybe we have that conversation before we make that decision. Yes. Huh? Mm, yes, of course. Um, <laughs> but? If you've, assuming you've given uh, thought to it, um, uh, yes, I should very much uh, like to. Uh, I'll be doing this wait in front of everybody. I, I <laughs> roll yes, a spot uh, another time. Another time. 
For I don't know what they're talking about. I mean, they would have to figure out, they'd have to find out either way. I'm what, what, what's what's going on? Carter's just drinking another Pisco. <laughs> you got um, hot goss? Well, I mean, I, I don't want to bring this up. I, I'm comfortable speaking about it to our friends if you are, but if not, then that's entirely it. Well, uh, assuming uh, if you're comfortable, uh, Miss Chevron, then I suppose I, of course I'm comfortable. I'm well. starting to get uncomfortable. Spill that British tea. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We're getting married. No, just, um, no, um, <laughs> uh, uh, so we, we may have to assume a relationship whilst there. But wait, I thought, Vaughn, I thought you were, you know. Excuse me? Um, uh, uh, I'm, what, 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 what Mr. Bron is saying is that, um, well, we've all grown closer over this time, haven't we? And um, mm-hmm. uh, there are certain expectations on one. And, uh, but but, but the, the heart, of course, plays part in these, in these uh, decisions. So much to say that um, if we are to go to Eagle's Grange, then uh, I, I am... Um, Yes, I I have uh, made a a a proposal to Miss Chevron that if she is so good as to accept it, um, then um we shall not uh, arrive at uh, my home as friends merely, but as uh, uh, fiancés. Oh, I yes. must see the ring. Oh ah. yes, I uh, suppose I. If we go, I will have to. Yes, well, there will there we, will be mean, one of those. I mean, you propose to with no ring. Well, well, I, I, I haven't made a said proposal yes for the proposal. yet. You, oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> We're all just sort of like <laughs> stepping over each other because no one wants to say. Uh, uh, Margot, I think what's uh, <clears throat> I think what's going on here is it's so hot in here. I think what's going on is uh, is that Vaughn, mm, Fabrus, is it's gonna be like a you know like a play. <laughs> Where, like, you pretend to be something that you're not. Uh, well, you're not pretending very well if you don't have the ring. That is true. You're going to need what's called a prop. In a play, we'd call it a prop. So you're right, going to need a prop right. of a ring. Well, um, seeing as how uh, I never want you or, or, I mean, or, or any of any of us uh, to assume a life that the world places upon us because it's what they deem to be right. And so um, as I have no desire to have a relationship forced upon me for the sake of society, and and, and uh, I assume that that's exactly what you are trying to avoid. Um, I think that as friends, we could have this sort of arrangement, and, and that way, know that you are always free to live the life that you want. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and I will be here as a friend to support you. And, and I as well. Um, uh, That's oh, beautiful. Don't. Uh, it's no need to ball us. Uh, um. <laughs> I've had a long day, and that was the best. So so cute. Yes, we've all been through a lot. Um, what are our relationships, if not uh, yes, um, <laughs> sister, mutual uh, support and and. Friendship is a start that that, that 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 many marriages are not built upon, and and if we start there, then who knows what affections might, might develop. Oh, right. Just no, no, exactly. No. The point is, is that the world is what it is, and we now are friends, and I will support you in whatever decisions you make and if that means um, 
pulling a fast one on your mother, then, <laughs> then uh, count me in. I, sh- I suppose it'll be fun in that aspect. Uh, very well. Uh, oh, oh, and out. my father's going to love meeting you. That's going to be amazing. <laughs> yeah. tip for Did you chat, call and ask permission? Uh, yes, I'll, um, I suppose I'll ask the old boy his... Uh, <laughs> Give me his blessing. <laughs> what? Oh no, what if we don't? He'll be so mad. <laughs> Carter Carter nervously takes a drink. He's like, Margo, we should we should pretend to uh, be uh, a couple too. I think that'd be that'd really... Oh, that would be so funny. <laughs> yeah, Could helps. you imagine? Yeah. Oh, I think yeah. I'm drunk now. Because that hilarious. was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yes, oh, it's rather God, funny, isn't it? Sorry. You did such yes, a great job happened. earlier. You're making me laugh way too hard. Oh, my side. No, no, what a corker. <laughs> I needed that. Sorry. You're yeah, so that's funny, what I'm here Carter. for, guys, to make everyone laugh. So, so funny. Oh, she pats you on the, on the back. Yeah, yes, yes, just yes. good friends. <laughs> okay. Just like they are good friends. Yes. Yes. Well, Here's what I'll say. I'll say that, uh, and, and, and Ross, you know, you came up with Eagles Grange, so you tell me. But I imagine it's in it's in the countryside outside of London, right? Yeah, I'm thinking it's it's like Howard's End. You know, it's out the train ride out of the city and out in the countryside. All right. So I would say that uh, you know, if you ever did want to follow up on that thing in the Midlands, you know, that could be like on, in the same direction, um, right. and maybe that's something you want to do on the weekend, so you don't, uh, you know, lose the opportunity for the business hours of these other leads that you have. I'm going to just arbitrarily say because we we've never really picked it. I, I brought up a calendar of February 1925. I'm going to say it's Wednesday, uh, February 4th. 1925 um and so you've got thursday and friday to do business in town and then maybe maybe it's a little trip on the weekend uh right. to old eagles Grange. well i i it may be nice to make contact with the the penhew foundation just to know a bit more about the tree that mr elias was barking up and perhaps they would have um uh academics in their ranks who could uh shed some light onto the nature of that rather bizarre potion that Mr. Shipley was so attached to. Yeah, maybe we could find a science book. Um, It'd also be nice to have a day that um, is more chill. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's terribly chill, middle of February. (laughs) Then I would be very surprised if we got attacked by any serpent people at Scotland Yard, so maybe that would, it's comforting to know that maybe there's a day yes. that we could not face death. I mean, yeah. I seem to remember thinking a couple of years ago that we were not going to get attacked at a university, uh, <laughs> and then <laughs> something tried to crawl up your nose, so you never know. Oh, I mean, yeah. We've had bad experiences with police before, but... Um, <laughs> that is true. But these are British constables. Unimpeachable and completely <laughs> above board. And they don't have guns, they just have sticks, it's fine. Yes. And they ride um, around on bikes. Right. Okay. With one big wheel. <laughs> yes, one big wheel on the front. Time. <laughs> but perhaps there is, um, there is uh, such a one among them as... Uh, I mean, if what Shipley said is true, then there must have been a series of disappearances in order to feed that beastly thing. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah, so it's... do we go to Scotland Yard or do we go to these eggheads at Penhew? Um, maybe if we go to Penhew's first, we'll have a little... If we gain any more knowledge, then we could follow up on that Yeah. as well. That sounds. Yeah, that also sounds pretty chill. Rather chill, yes. A club. Oh, Margie. Yes. I'm, I'm tired of stumbling around in the dark. Let's, um, let's see if we can let some light break onto all of these questions that we have. Should I bring my shotgun to the Penhue Foundation? <laughs> I would say no, but that's the old me. It seems you that it comes yeah, in handier and I handier would, every day. Yes, I would um, never know. Let's not go unarmed anywhere. I'll be tucking my thirty-two into my waistcoat. That's I don't really even know what I, what do I have. I got this fucking cleaver from their house. What am I doing? <laughs> I've got like my long trench coat or whatever. So like, yeah, I'm bringing my shotgun with me. <laughs> 
Uh, uh, it's always good to have a shotgun. Best I could do is uh, give you a, a, I think I think I have like a pocket knife or a dagger or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> if well, you'd did like, we, Tilly did we say, I know I didn't have it when we went to that guy's house, but do I still have this cool like dagger from season one? Did I bring that with me or is that a Oh yeah, issue? I think you probably... Give me that dagger. Like, That's my cheese knife. I never leave home without it. Yeah, it's just, it's just like bejeweled and encrusted with the blood of my enemies. It's on the inside pocket with all the other vials. <laughs> uh, yeah, that should be fine. Uh, okay, so Penhu Foundation in the morning. You know, another thing to keep in mind, uh, this may this was a lot easier in New York where we all had sort of a common... Uh, you know, knowledge of the area. There, there are research locations and libraries throughout London. If you ever like, before you want to go visit a place or you want to look up on something, yeah. uh, you have there's no internet, but you have the ability to be like, I'm going to go to the London Library and uh, do some research. Um, you know, just I'm not pointing that to anything you're about to do, but you have that ability throughout the campaign. Don't don't forget about that. Right. Um, all right. So uh, say you go to bed, each of you with uh, various visions of this transformation of Bertha Shipley into a lizard woman kind of replaying in your heads, replaying this fight on the stairs, this desperate fight, Miles punching away and how you yet again just narrowly escape uh, losing one of your team. And then you wake up the next day um, February 5th, 1925 Thursday it's foggy out, like Shocker. always. Yeah. And you head over to the Penu Foundation. Penu Foundation is in central London on Tottenham Court Road. Uh, still says it says that right on Edward Gavigan's business card. Um, it's near the intersection of Morwell and Bailey Streets. That is, of course, north of Oxford Street and west of the British Museum. Uh, it is a high Victorian building from the outside of fewer stories and greater ceiling height than the uh, buildings to either side and altogether grander in scale. A lot of money here, obviously. Um, kind of cool. When you think about uh, Jackson's interest in uh, the Carlisle expedition, you met with Erica Carlisle at the, uh, at the um, fund fundraiser and now you're at the Penu Foundation. This is like the second big, uh, the, like being really close to someone from the expedition, Sir Aubrey Penu, the former director. Uh, there's a high iron fence surrounding the building. You can see the hours are posted outside 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Another sign uh, that looks like it's newer underneath, maybe it's something that can be uh, changed from time to time, says the Egyptian collection. Is viewing uh, is open for viewing from noon to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday, so it's closed on the weekends. Uh, there is a doorman uh, standing outside of the only door beyond the fence at the front of the building, and then there's like uh, the fence goes all the way around the building. Are you guys approaching from the front? Are you doing uh, any sort of where were you coming from? Are you, are you guys renting a car, taking cabs everywhere? You wouldn't really walk. To hear. Yeah, I feel like we're it's early enough in our journey to where cab sounds like the, the move. Yeah. Okay. All right, so front door, go up to the doorman. Yeah. Okay. Uh, doorman, big guy, big mustache, hat. He's like, uh, greetings. Uh, how may I assist you? I was wondering if we might um, arrange an appointment with uh, the esteemed Mr. Gavigan. Ah, Mr. Gavigan, well, you'll need to speak to uh, Mr. Kinnery. Uh, just a moment. Uh, please wait here. Oh, actually, please come inside. It's rather cold out today. It could start raining any minute. And he brings you inside to the foyer. And uh, it looks like a two-floor building. Um, the second floor must be much uh, taller, uh, like higher ceiling heights than this first floor. Um, because you saw the outside of the facade. It looks like a pretty tall building. But the first floor here, the ceiling height is maybe like eight. 10 feet. Uh, there's doors running all the way along a corridor um, and the doorman kind of walks all the way to the back hallway and kind of knocks on a door uh, on the left side, uh, right side of the hallway. Dun, dun, dun. After a minute, he goes in and then he comes out uh, with a, uh, a man. And the man, as he's approaching you, he has a small frame 
a smallish frame. He's like maybe mid thirties. He's wearing a pinstripe suit. He has a pointed nose, very angular uh, features. Uh, and he uh, walks right up and says, uh, "Good afternoon. Um, may I help you? You're, you're here to s- speak to Mr. Gavigan." Yes. And the name we were given for this guy was Kettering or something. Like that? Uh, Kinnery, Mr. Kinnery. Kinnery. Yes. Um, K i n n e r y. You're here to speak to Mr. Gavigan. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have an appointment for you, I, I don't believe. W- what are your names? I'm oh, terribly sorry. I was hoping to make one, uh, Mr. Kinnery. Um, I am uh, Von Villiers. These are my my associates, uh, Ferris Gibran. Uh, the, the Esmond Carter Tillinghouse. Hey, hey. Of course, uh, Freilein Margot Sauer, late of the continent. Um, we are associates of um, uh, Ms. Erica Carlyle as well as um, um, old friends of Mr. Jackson Elias. Jackson Elias. Um, I, I believe he had an appointment with Mr. Gavigan uh, just a few months back. You're associates of his. Yes, indeed. I'm, yes. I'm sorry, but have you heard um, any news about Mr. Elias? Uh, since that of, time? As a matter of fact, I have. I, and the only reason it... Uh, uh, drew my attention is because I, I I had set up the appointment between him and Mr. Gavigan. He was only here uh, one time. A terrible thing. Uh, your friends of his and Miss Carlyle's. Just so. We've, we've intimate associates of, of Mr. Elias and um, acquaintances of Miss Carlyle. Um, but uh, yes, if you if you met Mr. Elias, then we we have traveled with him or corresponded with him and uh, hoping to get a, get our hands around uh, the work that he was undertaking and seeking your uh, foundation's assistance to complete. Um, well, um, um, I imagine Mr. Gavigan would, uh, would, would, would be open to speaking with you. Uh, I'd, I'd have to check his uh, sh- schedule, but I believe he has an opening tomorrow at uh, 2 p.m. Um, if that works for you, I can go and see if that holds up and, and put you in the book. That would be ever so kind of you. Uh, right, and it was, um, he pulls out like a little pad of paper. You said it was uh, Vaughn uh, Villiers. How do, how do you spell that? Uh, V-I-L-L-I-E-R-S. Okay, and uh, Carter? Tillinghast? Tillinghast? Like it sounds. Tillinghast, yes, H-A-S-T. Spells it so. Yes, and, I think uh, so. Uh, uh, madam, what was your name? He looks at you, Ferris. Ferris uh, Gibran, F-A-I-R-U-Z, G-I-B-R-A-S. Ferus, if you'd come here on your own, I assumed you would be looking at the Egyptian collection. Ferus Gibran. The hell? Interesting. And uh, Mar- uh, what was your name, madam? Oh, Margot. Margot Sauer. Margot. We should really make business cards good. Yeah. Oh. You no, I like from- this. We should make a group card. Yeah. Yes, a group. A group Mystery game. squad. I've been the telling you guys. Mystery it's a cool squad. Kids. Yes. Club card. Maybe we can do that between now and two. Yes. Yes. Tomorrow. Um, yes. Excellent. Tenth uh, mysteries free. We can do a punch card. Oh. <laughs> uh, oh, just, just give me one moment. Let me just ensure that uh, he's available at that time, and uh, we can we can have you back uh, tomorrow, Friday, two p.m. Just, just one moment, and uh, uh, make yourselves comfortable. And he just kind of skitters back to that door that he came out of and goes in. Okay. Is the um, that Egyptian uh, exhibit? Is that like? Are we standing in it right now, or is it kind of nearby? Can we kind of saunter over yeah. there? There's uh, arrows kind of leading, uh, to pointing to the back. This is like collection this way, um, and it's probably it, you, you, you're led to believe that it's upstairs, um, which would make nice. sense. Like this would be a grand ballroom. Uh, as you look up ahead and kind of follow your eye, uh, follow like follow him walking away. You just see like this hallway has several doors off of it. One looks like a bathroom, maybe offices. Um, there's a door if you're if you're kind of doing some spying here. There's a door that looks like it might be a library. You see lots of shelves with books, mm. um, and uh, after a couple of minutes, he comes back 
And he's like, uh, you're all set. Uh, 2 p.m. tomorrow. I, I apologize. I, I, I couldn't get you in uh, today, but uh, Mr. Gavigan, I'm, I'm sure, would, would love to speak with you. Uh, 2 p.m. tomorrow, just uh, come right back here, and I will be uh, waiting uh, waiting for you, and uh, you can uh, speak to Mr. Gavigan. Is there anything else that I can uh, help you with since you made the, the, the trip here from whatever your... Uh, are, you, are you visiting? Are you? Uh, are you I, I can. I detected accent uh, for you, Mr. Villiers. Obviously, a fellow countryman. But uh, the rest of you, are you uh, visiting, or are you uh, expatriates? Well, you know, we're open to the idea of becoming expats. You know, we just got to see how welcoming your country is. Just kind of hanging out, enjoying the vibes. Mm-hmm. Very clammy. Troy, what would the what would this institute like? What this foundation like? What kind of information is? Would we know? Would we? Be aware of yeah i mean it would definitely be worth maybe doing some research on them but just sort of like brass tacks what you know about the penu foundation is like it's a foundation that specializes in egyptology like sir rb Prenu was a uh, renowned egyptologist and they fund expeditions to egypt as well as like the cataloging and categorizing of um you know uh, what's the word i'm looking for artifacts mm. um and so yeah that's 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 what this is, and obviously they got a lot of money because the place is yes. uh, tip top. Well-funded, uh, well-funded. Do you? What's the student's name again? I forgot. Thomas Kinry. Kinry. Uh, Kinry. Um, be good man. It's already. It's already. I'm starting to talk like you guys. It's great. <laughs> jolly, jolly good. Jolly. Uh, <laughs> yes, Bob's your uncle. If you, uh, I understand that you guys are uh, uh, very into. Egyptology and, and what have you. Yes. Um, are you aware of these like weird Egypt related like murders or whatever that's going on? We saw some clipping about that. That looks pretty nuts. Yes, it's uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, you wouldn't be the first, uh, Mr. Tillinghast, that has inquired about that. Uh, thankfully, uh, it has nothing to do with our work here, um, though it is uh, rather uh, disturbing to say the least. Uh, we're here to protect and preserve uh, Egyptian culture. And it seems like others are interested in doing other things. Um, but it is something we don't really uh, discuss. We don't want to be involved with it. And by protect it, you just mean just take stuff from Egypt and then bring it back here. And you, can, you can see Feyre's face. Yeah, kind yeah of that's like. right. That's <laughs> well, we, we, kind of mean just... We are, we, are, we are lucky to have a, a lot of um, uh, ability at our disposal uh, to, um, to treat those, uh, those artifacts with the respect that they deserve. And, uh, you know, there are many people out there that just uh, hoard these things or try to uh, sell Egyptians. them. Egyptians. Mm. Yes, but we, we, have a, we have a great relationship uh, with, uh, with, with, with Egypt and we have many people on the ground over there. It's, it's, it's very symbiotic. It's not, uh, we are not grave robbers, Mr. Tilly. On that note, uh, Mr. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, your name again? Uh, it's, it's Mr. Kinnery, but you, please, you may Mr. Call, me, call me Thomas. Uh, it's really Thomas. a common name around here. Um, you... Uh, as far as the protection of these sites, would that uh, include any military personnel or would this just be strictly civilian? Um, that, that is a better question for Mr. Gavigan. I wouldn't want to speak out of turn. I'm just his personal secretary, um, but uh, I assure you this is a, a, a renowned foundation. Um, you know, we have some uh, unfortunate connection to that expedition from some years past, but uh, everything here is uh, on the up and up. Yes. Well, we, we've certainly not come here with any attempt, any cast of aspersions or bring poor publicity to you, only to answer some questions that continue to plague us about that expedition and those involved and the uh, things they may be connected to. Very good. Well, I'm sure Mr. Gavigan will be able to shed uh, as much light as possible, more light than probably anyone, as he was mm. very close to uh, Mr. Penhew. Um, but if you'll excuse me, I do have some other business to attend to uh, for Mr. Gavigan and the Foundation. But 2 p.m. tomorrow, and uh, I will, I will, I will greet you here. Um, will we be able to go look at the exhibition? Um, yes. Is that all right? Uh, yes, uh, that should be fine. Uh, okay. Just right down to the end of the hallway, you can uh, take uh, the stairs up to the second floor, and uh, you'll see there are a couple of men standing outside. Uh, you can uh, sort of browse at your leisure, and uh, you know you may see some visiting scholars uh, or whatnot, but they are deep in their work. So uh, just if you don't mind, I'm sure you have the same traditions in uh, the countries from which you hail to just kind of 
keep things keep oh, yes. things quiet. Yes, yeah, this course. is a group that understands the meaning of quiet and discretion. Mm. Yes, <laughs> not like you're going around killing lizard people and no. marrying them with <laughs> prostitutes. So. That'd be As the saying goes. Well, thank Wild. you so much, Mister Kim. So he gets the name again. Kinnery, I'm sorry. Yes. It's Kinnery, just, sorry. It's, Kinnery, yes. Kinnery. just Thomas. Thomas is fine. Mister Kinsa. Kinsa. Anyways, um, uh, actually, I'm, I'm walking that way. I'll, I'll, oh. I'll, I'm walking oh. back that way. And Why so he just awkward. Dun, 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 yeah. dun, 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 dun. He walks you down the hallway, and uh, he just points you like right up those stairs, and you just pass doorway after doorway after doorway. Sure enough, it is a library. You see a couple people sitting in there uh, reading, and uh, and then just beyond the door that he goes in, there's like a red door uh, that kind of stands out, and then there's a staircase uh, leading up. And he's like, uh, all right, uh, very well. I will see you at 2 p.m. tomorrow, and... Um, Pleasure, pleasure uh, meeting you all. And he goes in that little side door. Bonjour. Did any of you catch his name? <laughs> <laughs> it's something, it's so like, it's so ethnic, it's hard yes. to... I could, it's just <laughs> slides right off my brain. <laughs> um, Teddy? Yes. Teddy? It's on the tip of my tongue. Um, no, I know his first <laughs> name is, yeah, his first name is Timothy. Right. Absolutely. Definitely. Timothy, yes, yes. definitely Timothy. Yeah. Um, um, well, I suppose let's take a gander around the room. Um, yes. Um, do we want to mistakenly lose our our way there on the way, or oh. no? You want to do some sneaky peekies? Yeah. I did notice a rather uh, tempting library. But, um, I mean, he did give the directions to me, and I am just as a woman. Uh, <laughs> it is uh, you know, uh, maybe how moments lost after we you get <laughs> so easily lost. <laughs> I uh, know. That's why we always have to stop and ask for directions. Just, uh, why don't we just know. do that? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe moments after Margot uh, suggests <laughs> that you do notice um, a uh, guard uh, kind of walk by and uh, regard you. And as he passes, and a couple minutes later, another guard mm-hmm. uh, walks by. So there are uh, uh, people guarding the premises. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, artifacts here. Um, so they need to have uh, protection. But... Uh, it doesn't seem like many moments go past where uh, someone isn't keeping an eye on you. Mm-hmm. And if you go up the stairs and head in the direction of the Egyptian collection, there are two more guards uh, posted outside. Uh, and they're like museum guards, you know what I mean? Like they don't yeah. look mm-hmm. armed. Maybe they are, but they're just kind of standing there and they uh, smile. Feruz will, will take, uh, will lock, kind of lock arms with Vaughn and just kind of make it look like they're strolling leisurely, like as though they were in a museum. Mm-hmm. Man, you guys look so natural. They're getting the practice in now. It's great. <laughs> so we really have. We really should. I mean. Yes. <laughs> right, right. Um, too right. right. Right this way, darling. And um, uh, kind of sweep into the into the room and let's take a look at what they have in their Egypt collection. Yes. You absolutely. go into the exhibit hall, and mm. the windows are really tall. The ceilings are like twenty feet high, like you assumed from looking at the outside. Um, there are like little ventilator openings at the top that can be operated by mechanical arms um, to open the windows and, and let air in. Um, everything, uh, all the surfaces in here are finished in marble. Uh, and you see like glass cases with mummies, um, glass cases filled with pottery and other artifacts, statuary um, and so forth, uh, just sort of filling the hall all in very tasteful rows. And uh, there are other people about, uh, and this is just this air of hushed contemplation uh, pervading the space. Does it all look very like, quote unquote, normal? Or is there anything that like speaks to us and what we've seen? Yeah, I mean, uh, weren't you guys, where were you guys? Was it the university that had the museum in it? Like going back to Peru? Or did you guys go to oh, a museum? Right. You went to we, a museum in Peru, Very right? early on, I think. Yeah. 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 I yeah. at least did. I think it, it was in my, Peru. like, free days. That's right. And you yes. met uh, the woman that ended up being, uh, like, eaten by the yes. carousel, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, you like this painting? Yeah. After um, having a uh, tuberculosis attack or whatever. <laughs> Um, um, so yeah, I mean, if it's there's little... anything that's got like hieroglyphics and something, maybe any symbols that we might have stumbled across. Sure, I mean, you do see um, some like slabs that maybe have been mm-hmm. taken from the inside of a pyramid um, that have hieroglyphics on it. Um, can't really make heads or tails of it. Mm-hmm. it looks like every hieroglyphics. Um, there's you know a, a sort of quick glance as you walk around and take everything in, like the other uh, people that are walking around. Uh, 
nothing really jumps out at you as like, wait a minute, that's a bloody tongue, or like, that's Jackson Elias dressed as a pharaoh. Uh, <laughs> wait a minute. No, everything just seems like, uh, like it's like going, if you were going to the Met and looking in uh, uh, Egyptian ex- exhibit, even the mummies, there's no, uh, nothing really jumps out of you. You read the name, you're like, it doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah. Uh, but Ferris does want to take this opportunity that sh- they're like alone and uh, say, Vaughn, mm-hmm. um, I- I'm going to need your help with something. Uh, yes. I- I'm. Be- you served in the military, yes. Quite and, so. Um, Kill those and, gods. Uh, <laughs> seize them. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I need help looking for a certain name. Uh, a, a soldier, a British soldier that was stationed uh, in Egypt at a certain time. And I'm wondering if you had any idea where I might look up if there's a registry or... Uh, you see... Yeah. And she like pulls out her mother's journal and like it's mostly like... Like it's all in mostly in Arabic. The uh, <laughs> cat jumps out. They worship these, you know. <laughs> the secret compartment in the journal. What if the cat comes uh, back? Right. Right. Cat jumps. Out. Mm. They did worship these things. Um, <laughs> <there's>, <laughs> uh, and she flips through like her mother's journal, which is like I would say probably ninety percent written in Arabic. But there's like a name that she stops, and and it's the name Troy of this soldier that we're thinking she might have had an affair with. Mm, yes. uh, I believe, I was trying to think, was it Emil L? Emil Emil L, I believe, L. right? Um, and I hmm. know, all I know is this name. I don't know the full last name, but I know that he was in Cairo around, and I I'm give him the uh, approximate dates. Uh-huh. I'm, That's all I know. Yes, um, uh, there are military records that one could one could look at if he if he did serve um if he if he served on the western front uh, then y- yes i think we we may be able to narrow it down although depending on how many other emil emils there are with this particular initial i mean it's, it's a long shot but there's i haven't talked to you about my family much and my mother died in very mysterious circumstances that nobody seems to want to talk about, and all I have of her is this diary of hers. Something about it has never sat with me right, and I'm just trying to find answers. Interesting. You think this British soldier stationed in Egypt that she met may have some clues to fill out your, the picture of her? If nobody surrounding me and my family will ever talk to me about her, maybe this person will. If he's still alive, I don't know. Or at least give me some insight into anything about her life. Well, I'll certainly certainly see what I can do. After we leave here, I can... Uh, um, I'm now Ross doesn't know where to go, but Vaughn knows where to go. (laughs) Um, So I feel like some sort of military organization would probably keep... um, like a, there's got to be a registry sort of record. Records. Yeah, a registry oh, of, yeah. of, of yeah. veterans. Maybe even the London Library or the British Museum uh, would have those, but you could certainly, uh, maybe even the concierge could uh, do some research for you to find out like the best place to find that. But you think it's possible you could uh, find records, uh, whether yeah. or not this person would show up in it. You think you could get access to those, uh, especially as a, a veteran, you might have more uh, more ability right. to gain access. Mm. Um, so yes, yeah, so I will... I will, I will. I'll do everything in my power to find this man, then, and see if we can discover his current whereabouts. Thank you. I mean, I know I'm chasing so many things at the moment, but this would really mean a lot to me. Of course. So you look about this space, and again, nothing really jumps out at you. Um, you do see at one point um, a... Uh, couple people dressed in suits come in and they're uh, wearing white gloves and uh, they walk over to a uh, case and uh, unlock it open it up and they have like a box with them and they very very carefully it's like this uh, 
uh, <laughs> long, long process, very carefully transfer the item uh, to a box, close it, lock the case back up, and then um, take it outside uh, of the room. And if you if you kind of casually watch where they're going, you see they are bringing it to another room, um, and then the door closes. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I suppose we're looking at just a fraction of their larger collection, the rest of which may be lodged back there. Mm. Mm-hmm. Doesn't it make you think that how incredible it is that we can live a million lifetimes and never know everything there is to know about existence? There's always something. Yes. <laughs> Vast gulfs of history extend behind us, deeper and longer than. <laughs> Then the mind can comfortably probe into. Carter's talking to one of those security guards like, so you put malt vinegar on your fish and chips? <laughs> <laughs> um, sometimes. Ugh. Ugh. God, okay. <laughs> it's not a requirement, uh, so. Uh, anyway, I think about crazy things sometimes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I get deep. <laughs> You're not from here, are you? Uh, I don't know what gave that away, but yes, it's very astute. <laughs> well, enjoy the collection. Um, yeah, and it, uh, <laughs> just cutting out of this conversation, just into the mind of Vaughn, is just like, God, yes, so much in the in history that you don't know. Of. If only there was a way to send your mind back there, <laughs> deep into the past. Oh no! Um, dum 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 dum. <laughs> the dose beckons. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're you realize you're at a certain point you might be overstaying your welcome. Um, okay. There's you, you walk up and down. You're scanning. I don't even uh, need you to do any type of rolls. You're welcome to, but uh, again, nothing really jumps out at first glance, um, with the exception of them bringing uh, something back. But even that, you don't know what's normal around here, so you don't know if that's abnormal. Right. Can um. Maybe I even approach the guard. Like, um, I say, uh, what, what, what was that there? Are they removing something from the collection? Are they bringing, is something new being added? Oh, that, uh, um, it's uh, not too uncommon. Uh, usually an uh, accredited scholar with a letter of recommendation can uh, request to have a specific artifact brought to one of our examination rooms uh, for them to do their own uh, sort of... Uh, exam and, and study of these items. Uh, you have to have a, at least a letter of recommendation or be known uh, in the community to do this because uh, you know one would assume there could be handling of the object and uh, you are normally locked in a room with uh, one of our staff to ensure uh, the safety of the, the artifact. Um, so that's that's what you saw there most likely. Ah, so, so a distinguished archaeologist is even now um, studying whatever was in that little box? Yes, uh, it's a, a very normal occurrence here at the Penny Foundation. Uh, people from all over the world uh, travel to the Penny Foundation to study the artifacts that we have uh, uncovered over time. That I is say we, fascinating. I, I just work here. Oh, no uh, matter. How, uh, I was assuming we were still <laughs> just like... Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. I didn't uh, see you behind him. How... Uh, just out of curiosity, how, how long of a process does it take to, to, to examine and to... Uh, to research a particular artifact. Uh, Sally, I'm just the help. I don't know too much about the ins and outs of it, but uh, everyone is granted different time depending on the, their uh, their needs. Uh, to even have the opportunity to study these things means that you've, uh, you know, you are accredited. Um, so normally, it, uh, normally a day, a day is is the normal time. Although some scholars we do see come back uh, from time to time for weeks on end uh, for whatever they may be studying uh, or preparing for an expedition, as it were, as, as the Penny Foundation does um, fund uh, various uh, expeditions to Egypt. Uh, yes. Any manner of reasons people study what we have here. Right. Um, and, uh... Okay. Um... <laughs> Part of me wants to like peek in that little room it was taken into to see who's doing, giving it the business. Um, Sadly, that door is locked. Oh yes, of course. 
You mentioned the uh, the rather tight security you have here. I suppose you, you don't want any of these artifacts walking off. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. Some may not have any value whatsoever, but they certainly have value to uh, the Foundation. Certainly. Nothing of that sort has ever happened, has it? No, no, no. No, no. no daring heists or raids on your on your Foundation? <laughs> Thankfully, no. Not, not on our watch. Well, great. Well. <laughs> well, uh, thanks for stopping by. Uh, so you have an appointment here tomorrow, 2 p.m. Uh, the day is still young. You know, I would say it's like noon by now. So you could still head over to Scotland Yard. You could go get lunch. Um, oh, you know, we should, we should try some of this malt vinegar. <laughs> we should go find a place to go get some business cards made. <laughs> yes, yes, we should get the that business cards made. I hate <laughs> spelling my name out loud. Um, also... Would it help if we like researched the Penhue Foundation before going to the meeting tomorrow? More? Yes, I, I think we we should at least have a better knowledge of what they would know, so that yes, certainly. we could ask the right questions. And... Well, if someone wants to go to the library to give the one silver to the Penhues, I could certainly go to the printers and get an appropriate card for the Mystery Squad. If, if that is the name we're going with. I... You do have the best taste out yeah, of oh, all yes. of us, I would say. Um, I, I trust my, my own, my own deci- decisions when it comes to the typeface, the, the kerning mm. size. You're a Helvetica man through and through. Mm. Yeah. I, yeah, be Coloring. gone, Seraphs. Seraphs be gone. Make sure yes. it's Ooh. a good card stock. Mm, yes. <laughs> no uh, serfs. Yeah, so I mean, if some of you want to go to London Library, uh, yeah, that's in St. James Square. Um, that's a subscription library, but you might be able to get a day pass um, or get like a short term membership at a reduced cost. We look official with business cards. <laughs> yeah, but once you get the business cards, it should be no problem at all. Uh, if others of you want to do other things, um, either real or fake you can do that um, <laughs> and then you could you could save Scotland Yard for some other time you could call Wait, ahead someone um, remind me about the Scotland Yard thing just to go to ask about the the investigation that's going on in these news articles is that the idea the investigation going on uh, as concerns the Egyptian murders right okay yeah. which I thought that like we would uh, maybe whatever we found out tomorrow yeah wait would help us in knowing what to look for mm-hmm. or what to ask. Uh, should we make, um, do we need to make any appointments in advance? Because even so with the Pen- Pendu Foundation, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you could call ahead and try and uh, reach Inspector James Barrington. He was the one that was uh, named in the scoop. Um, yes, and, and we have insights about um, occult Sects that um, that murder people um, associated with uh, ancient uh, uh, African uh, deities and what have you. Uh, it's it's not out of the ordinary that we wish to share information with the, with the people who are investigating. I suppose. Yeah. All right, let's so, try to make uh, an appointment for tomorrow after this, maybe. Maybe research and then go back to the hotel to mm-hmm. use the hotel phone to call uh, Scotland mm-hmm. Yard. All right, great. So let's head over to the uh, London Library, um, uh, Mr. Villiers. You could, uh, as the as the local person here, you could set up a, a membership. Maybe you even have one. Who knows? And uh, they're like, oh, please look around, whatever you like. And you guys wanted to do some research on the Penhue Foundation. Mm-hmm. Um, so go ahead and give me some mm-hmm. library use roles. Hey, Ruth. <laughs> there we uh, go. If you fail, you can keep in mind you can push <laughs> or use luck. I got a ninety-nine. Man, okay, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> you use burn luck. down the library. Uh, I can I'm still it. drunk. I can I also try know. before you burn anything. You uh, give it a swing. Out of curiosity, uh, Marga, you got a ninety-nine. Mm, yeah. And what's your library oh. use? Is it under fifty? Oh yeah, it's thirty-two. All right, so that is. A fumble just oh here we yeah but well, what could i possibly there. fumble in here keep that out there Uh-oh. okay whatever all right so margo comes in and just falls i just got a regular 16 points of luck i just got a regular success on the library use roll for what okay and then uh favor is you use 16 points of luck to get a regular should i oh. no yeah. he, he got vaughn vaughn just vaughn hit it save we got a double perhaps you oh. don't speak okay. british 
Uh, that's right. It, it's it's. Um, I can't make heads or tails of this English. I'm like <laughs> turning books upside down. This is perfect. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not herb. Gonna, I won't spend luck. I'll just. Uh, all right, great. So you start, uh, you know, let's think about this. It's not like you're here for an hour. This is like a, you gotta, you gotta hang out if you want to really research. Not like, yeah. ah, finally, a book on everything I need to know, the Penny Foundation. Vaughn, as the only one succeeding, has to kind of lead the way. Maybe if more of you succeeded, it would take less time like you. Oh, we got a bunch of books. We can gather yeah. information. But we'll say uh, time passes and you do see public records uh, showing that the foundation was established in 1890. Uh, so... Uh, 35 years ago by Sir Aubrey Penhew, a renowned Egyptologist. And as director of the foundation, Sir Aubrey oversaw and funded a number of expeditions to Egypt uh, since its formation. You know, he was obviously a leading figure in the Carlisle expedition of 1919 and was among those murdered in Kenya. Uh, You see that Edward Gavigan um, succeeded him as the foundation's director. Um, he worked there previously under uh, Sir Aubrey. Uh, what does the foundation do? It issues grants to scholars that are undertaking the study of Egyptian history and antiquities. Its work also includes negotiating permits with the Egyptian authorities. It sort of corroborates what they told you. It's like, oh yeah, we, we have people in Egypt we work with all the time. Um, and they, uh, they have a back and forth that assists with planning expeditions, travel itineraries, the hiring of local labor. Uh, the foundation takes care of all of that. Um, the building in London that you just visited uh, serves to house Egyptian artifacts recovered from the sands of time, uh, as well as acting as a repository of information concerning Egyptian history and the numerous expeditions undertaken in northeastern Africa. Um, further reading, it appears that uh, roughly 20 digs in Egypt have been supported by the foundation um, with 10 of those happening uh, since Sir Aubrey's untimely death. Um, Unfortunately, many of the digs since the uh, Carlisle expedition have been overshadowed uh, by tragedy while in Egypt. Um, Mm. Seems like uh, the expeditions that have happened afterwards, several people have died. Um, 20 in all. After the Carlisle expedition? Yeah, like some of these expeditions that they've funded have been met with tragedy. Like 20 people have died overall. And uh, you see that some of them, uh, the death seems to be attributed to being murdered by the locals, which is what, um, you know, what the story was about what happened to the Carlisle expedition like. The yeah, guys, but that was in that was in Nairobi, right? When that right, happened, where that happened. Mm-hmm. right. But that's kind of the same thing. Same like thing, they went yeah. too far out there, and then like people were they were hung for it, and they were like, "All right, case closed." So some were murdered by locals. But as you keep digging, you see that some of the deaths were suicides. Mm. And currently, the foundation appears to have one dig uh, that is underway near Cairo, led by someone named Dr. Henry Clive who is excavating on the Giza Plateau. You know, everything else you find out, it's just sort of more of the same. Um, but the, the the deaths really stood out to you as strange. It's one thing like, oh, they went to territory they weren't supposed to. Maybe they met some tribe that is like outside of civilization. They walked where they weren't supposed to. But some suicide. Also, uh, I was looking back at, um, this is only tangentially related, but I was looking back at the older articles we got from the beginning about the Carlisle expedition. And they went to Egypt and they were in Cairo. And then the whole reason that they even left to go to Nairobi, or this says East Africa, was well-earned rest. And... uh, (laughs) And then also someone said, it's too hot in Egypt for Anglo-Saxons at this (laughs) at this time of the year. But anyway, they were like, uh, Carlisle didn't comment, but Aubrey Penhew uh, debunked rumors that the expedition had discovered clues to the legendary wealth of the lost mines of King Solomon, maintaining the party was going on safari in respite from our sandy labors. (laughs) So just something to keep in mind when we talk to them tomorrow, too, about like... What happened with the Carlisle situation and whatever the story was that got fed. 
Okay, interesting. Mm. Seems as though everyone who gets begins to delve into these sorts of things, whether literally or figuratively, <laughs> winds up in grave, grave danger. Margot picks up the book you're looking at and just like holds it in front of herself upside down. She's like, I don't know. Um, I haven't found anything. I haven't found anything uh, helpful. I don't. This library is hard to use. I don't know why. It's just disorganized, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't Margo, think, I think anything your eyes is organized have crossed here. a little bit. <laughs> what? You've been That's... through a lot today. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, we've all been through a lot. Nothing no, like um, the scent of reptiles to make you <laughs> disoriented. Yes. Well, um, I will. I'll have a tick. I'll just uh, pop off to the print shop and. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can go with like a slate gray or like a buttercream. For the card mm. color. Oh, what about eggshell? Eggshell. I like nice. a raised Just typeface as well. Something that you can touch. <laughs> Spare no a expense, nice, Vaughn. We know heavy, you're good for it. Heavy paper. Yeah, nice. So people Thickness. know we mean business. Mystery yes. squad. Mm, yes. Uh, of course, Guilt my name at the top. Too far? <laughs> <laughs> so, first. Right, okay. Yes. Yeah. Reverse Soviet. alphabetical order, even though V comes after T. So day one was visiting a tabloid, following up on one thing, killing an, uh, a lizard person and uh, leaving the body there, uh, bringing the uh, insane painter to an asylum full of nuns and calling it a day. Day two involved going to the Penhu Foundation and setting up a meeting uh, with Edward Gavigan, uh, looking around the uh, Egyptian collection going to a library to do a little more research on the Penu Foundation before your meeting, and then going to get business cards for the mystery squad. Yes, and Vaughn goes out <laughs> into the into the fog, pops his collar, and strides through the fog towards a print shop, and takes a hard left turn right before he's about to enter it and walks into a nearby jewelry store. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, so we were just uh, closing up the day, um, but uh, he... You appear to be a man of means. Uh, may I, how may I help you? Um. <laughs> yes. Um. Looking over these cases. Um. What do you have in a princess cut diamond? Oh, princess cut. <laughs> she must be one lucky lady. Let me see what I have here. And uh, he uh, reaches down and he you see him fiddling with some stuff and he lays out like four uh, rings and they're all. Uh, princess cut and he goes on to explain like oh let me tell you this one is uh, this one's high in clarity this one's high in carrots and uh, is this a, a carrot size you were looking for particular carrot size um, oh yes uh, I apologize I, I assumed you uh, knew a little bit about uh, rings there are uh, four four C's uh, I could uh, go into it what, what's your budget <laughs> um my budget is uh Extremely high. I don't know. <laughs> like a l lean over and just kind of s select which one seems the most tasteful. Oh, well, very, very good choice, sir. Um, all right, uh, let me uh, let me get that for you and wrap it up. And he uh, wraps it all up and takes uh, a ton of money uh, for you from you. Does for this knock ring. my credit rating down ten points. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're, what is your credit rating? It's like crazy high, right? It's crazy high. It's my highest it's skill. Best skill. It's, it's, not, it's what 90. What is the three month oh. salary equivalent in, in Cthulhu <laughs> right, credit yeah. rating? $42. That was a $100 ring. Yeah. Uh, and he hands it to you in a box, all wrapped up. And he's like, oh, well, thank you. I'm glad I, I'm glad I didn't close up early. Uh, I, uh, I wish you the best of luck. Um, uh, may I ask your, uh, your fiance's name? Oh, um, her name is, uh, her name is Feruz Gibran. I, I, I don't think, um, she'll take mine. We're terribly modern, you see. Perhaps, perhaps we'll hyphenate. Lovely, lovely. Well, best of luck to you in your next journey, as it were. Yes. Ah, uh, quite a journey lies ahead. That's to be sure. Good day. Good day. 
Is the print shop next door still open? <laughs> the print shop closed, unfortunately. Damn. <laughs> no. What are you going to tell us when you come back? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, you can go to the print shop, get your cards. <laughs> you can meet up with everybody. Go back to the uh, hotel. Now it's it's later at night. You were at the library for a long time. A couple more successes. Maybe we would have got through it uh, quicker. Um, you still want to call through to Scotland Yard? Yeah, let's try to make that appointment. Okay. Mm, ahead of time. Uh, you call through and uh, uh, you ask to get like speak to James Barrington, Inspector Barrington? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um... Uh, oh, is is there a way to make an appointment to meet with uh, Inspector Barrington? Um, hold tomorrow? please. I'll, I'll pu- hold please. I'll put you through to uh, Mr. Barrington, and it just rings and rings and rings, and there's no answer. And there's your fumble. Uh, Ooh, that's not even a library. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> I like a dangling fumble. Damn. Is there like a, ma- a there's no answering machine? Uh, no, <laughs> oddly enough, Damn. no answering machine. Yeah. It is a little needle falls on a record. <laughs> Even the phones here, Ooh, they don't the make any sense. Yeah. There's no answering machine. I can't get through to anyone. Who took it the is picture? Past business hours. Did somebody take a photo of the uh, painting? Well, Margo got uh, it. Margo did. Mm. Margo did. Okay. Um, you can develop that later, or do you? Are you going to develop it anytime soon? I feel like. Um, it's a roll of film, so I would need to Ooh. take all the pictures type of thing. Right, okay, so this is something you can do later. Yeah. Selfie um, time. <laughs> okay, all right, so you guys are back, maybe a couple more Pisco Sours, and then uh, got a meeting with Mr. Edward Gavigan the next day. Um, any other business for today? The library kind of took up your whole day after um, goofing off at the Egyptian collection. <sighs> Wait, so do we get the cards or not? Um, place the order, Tillinghast. Uh, you know they don't. It's it's not a one hour turnaround. I mean, it's sitting here for like an hour, waiting to see these goddamn cards. <laughs> <laughs> I can zoom my prints in an hour for my photos. What you mean? Uh, don't, 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 don't worry. The, the cards are forthcoming. <laughs> um, Why is everyone giving me the third degree? You were just <laughs> for a while. I thought that they were doing it while you were there. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, box shape. <laughs> Bob. Nothing, just a pistol, uh, probably. Um. Uh, all right, so let's go to sleep. And you are, I imagine you have a nice hotel room. Vaughn's loaded. And uh, Margot and Feyruz, at one point in the night, you... Uh, You, like, wake up. I don't know if it's simultaneous or not. But you wake up, like people do from time to time, and just kind of turn over. Um, But you realize you woke up to the sound of something. And so you listen, and it's this, like... (laughs) It seems to be coming from... The other room. I mean, who's to say if this isn't a uh, two-bedroom situation here, two-bedroom suite, that the two of you aren't sharing a room? Would you hear this buzzing coming from the hallway? I'll slowly follow it. Get up, Margot. Do you get up as well? Yeah, maybe in in the being woken up from sleep, she maybe forgot about the vision, so she's like, "Is this fly? I'm going to kill it." Uh. Meanwhile, Feyruz is doing the uh, the slow barefoot creak towards it. <laughs> dunk, dunk. You walk ever slowly towards the sun. It starts to get a little louder, and you open the door leading to sort of the common area, and you look out into. Uh, the the living space and see a tall figure sitting in a high back chair with its back to you. And 
we'll see you next week. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> At least we didn't get any bad smells. God. I was wondering how you're going to cliff hang off of a print shop. <laughs> so, <laughs> the machine's not the ring shop. working. <laughs> We don't have Princess See you next week. No! <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> Things will be ready next week, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>